That was really bad. You don't have to keep. No, that's that that uh, that's actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've had worse. <laughs> I, I have had worse. Goodness. Are you a serious dinosaur collector that wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 37 of the Dinosaur Review Show. Today we continue our journey into the land of T-Rex. We're going to look at the T-Rex figures from Holland Good. Holland Good creates three different T-Rexes, but they all are the exact same model. They just come in different colors. And so today we're going to look at the brown one. George, let's take a look. So this is the Holland Good brown T-Rex. And Wow, I gotta say the detail on this is just the first thing that hits you. Let's start with the head as usual. Oh my goodness, there are there are two separate colors in that eye. There is like this greenish iris, and then the eyeball is kind of like this brown coloration. That is that's probably the first time I've seen more than one color in a dinosaur's eye. That is beautiful. If we open the mouth, there's a slight gloss to the teeth and the inside of the cheek, the tongue and the roof of the mouth. I love when they do that. It makes the mouth look like it's it's salivating, waiting for its next prey item. If we go to the top part of its eye, you see that it does have that keratinous crust. It extends all the way to the snout. The jaw opens and closes. I forgot to mention that. That's a very important feature for a lot of you uh, dino fans. If we move down the neck, you see those osteoderms coming down. We don't have direct evidence of these, but we, what we do have is evidence of neck skin and tail skin, which is what I've been using as a basis of comparing the type of scales. The type of scales are a little bit larger than what I've seen in fossil evidence, but it's still very good size as far as scales go. Uh, the arms are facing inwards, and the claws are very sharp. I do like me sharp claws. If we look at the feet, three forward facing, one backward facing and would you look at that it has a cloaca right there it's i mean it's a little hard to see but it is sculpted there with scales tail is held up horizontally and it is a good length and proportion and speaking of proportions i would say this t-rex's proportions are very similar to a juvenile i don't think i talked about the patterning but look at that it's kind of got this um beautiful striping that's horizontal we've got uh brownish tints kind of like a rust color with yellows i do like the scaling on the feet it's very different from the rest of the scales just like they are on birds feet and the toe claws are very sharp i just poked myself with it i would say this is a great figure how long good is doing good as i said they make that also in blue and red but this figure also comes with a base george let's get your opinion on the base all right let's touch base that was really bad. You don't have to keep No, that was, uh, that's actually okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've had worse. <laughs> I, I have had worse. Goodness. This is a Holland Good base for the T-Rex and very detailed. I mean, you've got moss on the rock, uh, which is very accurate because there were no grasses back then. So this is not grass. This is moss. And even water. They have a water feature. Looks like they put some rocks at the bottom with some algae, making it look like it's... Uh, very natural source of water. The base actually feels like rock. It's not a plastic texture. This is a very solid, solid base. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit to kind of show the T-Rex in all its splendor. Wow, look at that. That looks like the picture on the box. Okay, since this is the only form that Holland Good offers, we are going to advance this to the next round to the finals. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and a like, and always consider happyhentoys.com for all of your dinosaur needs. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. A couple questions, George. You said there were no grasses and only moss. Can you elaborate on that? So there was no flowering plants or grasses at that time. And if there were, there were very few. We don't find much fossil evidence of them. Grasses were a thing that evolved after the extinction of the dinosaurs. As you see, a lot of grazing animals evolve afterwards, like um, our modern day herbivores. You think of a plant eater, most of what they would probably eat are grasses. Think of deer, even elephants eat grasses, cows. A lot of our herbivores today eat grasses because they proliferated after the extinction of dinosaurs. Plants that were around at that time were like ferns, cycads. We had bushes, a lot of a lot of trees form the part of the diets of a lot of dinosaurs. That's why they had long necks. At least some of them had long necks. But the smaller, closer to the ground dinosaurs would eat things like bushes, 
leaves off of uh, plants that didn't have any flowers. And if they didn't have flowers, they also meant there was no fruit. Probably the only plants that I can think of that would have had some sort of flower or fruit or would have been magnolias and ginkgos. Those were around back then, but the fruits are kind of poisonous, so I wouldn't recommend eating them. Uh, don't go eat some prehistoric plants and blame me that I told you that they were okay to eat. No, they were okay to eat for dinosaurs, not people. So all the movies where we see the dinosaurs running through the grassy plains are fake. Oh, not all of them, because Jurassic Park brought dinosaurs back to today, and today there are grasses. But if you look at movies like, I don't know, like the movie Dinosaur, uh, that takes place back then. And if you see some grass there, well, that's not entirely accurate. It's one of those things that we take for granted because every time we look outside, we see grass. Well, every time the dinosaurs looked outside, they didn't see grass. They saw moss as they saw, bushes they saw, other kinds of plants. 